Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Market Psychology 101, where we look for value in the markets when there's fear and are cautious when there's greed. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the MAG7 stocks, as well as stocks whose earnings reports have come out last week. For any of you guys who are new to investing, the reason I take a look at stocks after earnings reports come out is because their prices can fluctuate quite a bit going into it and especially coming out of it and i think coming out of earnings reports you get more of a telltale sign of where the price of that stock is going at least in the short term so starting off with fear and greed cnn has this all the way down in fear not quite extreme fear so maybe there are some opportunities to buy at discounts as well as for pie vesting Pie vesting were at about 50%. Like I said, we're going to be going through last week's earnings starting from Monday, April 15th, Friday, April 19th. You can see here we had Chuck Schwab, Goldman Sachs. Um, what else do we have? We had Johnson & Johnson, United Health, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley. We won't do every single one, but yeah, quite a bit of good earnings reports coming out. Any here that interests me, not so much. Equifax, maybe they're they're involved in like everything. Taiwan Semiconductor, Netflix, those will be two we must look at, as well as maybe Procter and Gamble. We'll see. But there are some very important earnings reports coming up this next week. You can see here we start off with Verizon, but then we start getting to the Mag Seven. We have Tesla and Visa. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just realizing now that Tesla's market cap is lower than Visa's right now. So that must be a very recent development with how this stock has been selling off so much. And then we have Meta. I believe we have, yep, Microsoft and Google. Any others? T-Mobile, Caterpillar, Chevron, ExxonMobil. So some pretty good stock earnings reports coming out next week. Let's get into the charts. And I was curious about where the S&P 500 price is right now, just with how it was falling. I saw that we had this 100 moving average, but I was also curious to see where the fibs would line up. So when I drew a fib from the prior low or the prior high to the low, funny enough, we are right at this 100 day moving average and the 1.618 going over to the weekly you can see we have this weekly sell signal playing out. And since this peak that we had all the way in July of 23, this is only our third one ever since. And it's not really that surprising. I mean, when we have a move this big where we go up, got like 28% inside of half a year, that's huge. That's it's not typical ever for the S&P 500, so I, I think everyone was expecting a decent-sized pullback to happen. It, is this pullback going to get bigger? Maybe. Uh, it's already pulled back around 6 6-ish percent. If it did another 6% down or got us somewhere near this 50-week moving average, I could see that being possible, especially since we had a little bit of structure back here. So maybe we'll get there. And that price, let's see, around 4700 I wonder if that lines up anywhere on the daily. And yeah, you can see the 200-day moving average is right about where all that structure is. So should we get down there, that might create some good opportunities to buy. The VIX, the VIX has been spiking up lately. And usually when the VIX spikes up, especially like over 30 that those tend to be very very good times to buy and obviously can spike up even more that was the covid crash back here if you're curious about what the financial crisis looked like i mean my god well never mind that was COVID. <laughs> uh but yeah my god even higher look at that around 80 and the covid crash the covid crash got up as high as 65 so yeah anytime it's above 30s 40s tend to be good times of dollar cost average in of course it could always go lower um, but i rather not miss an opportunity i rather dollar cost average in and keep putting in until we get out i mean what if you just miss 
a little spike like this as well when it could have been a good opportunity to buy. So they just goes to show you things can always get lower, um, but you don't want to miss the opportunities if we've already sold off on some stocks like 50% plus. If they're good stocks, so you like them, you've done your research. When you take the volatility of the markets divided by the volatility of the VIX, you get a chart that looks like this. When it is dipped like this, those are local highs in the market. When it is peaking, those are local bottoms in the market. I know it sounds backwards, but something I like to do, and you see these red dots and green dots, I like to put on a buy-sell indicator. And if we get any macro buy-sell indicators, that can show us that a possible flip in the trends happening. So, you know, should we get in, should we be getting up, you know, around this 0.3 mark or higher? And then we get a monthly sell-off or sell signal. To me, that can indicate possible local market bottom. Of course, it can always go lower. Should we get something, you know, like a great financial crisis or a COVID crash, a black swan event? U.S. 10-year, two-year, this is the yield curve inversion. Something to keep note of is when this uninverts and goes above the zero line, typically that coincides with recessions and I believe we have not been this inverted ever or in a very 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 long time so you can see at least as far back as this chart goes to the deepest inversion on this chart so when this does eventually break above the zero line that's when you got to watch out for possible recession talks um, but do know that sometimes when they say recession you know, that can be after the market's already bottomed. So I've been very curious to see, you know, are we going to have a dot-com bubble, great financial crisis type recession? My money would be uh, more of a dot-com bubble than one of these, but you never know. Um, in these red lines, by the way, if you're new to this channel, these red lines are when the Fed first cuts rates after holding them higher for longer. And as you can see, those are near the tops, and the bottom was a year and a half, two years from then. The white lines are when inflation is peaked, and I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing about inflation and the 70s. Well, here, when inflation was peaked, that was closer to the market bottom. You can see we had those three peaks of inflation. I can pull up the inflation chart for you after this, um, but that was more of a signal of the market bottom than the rate cut. But you can even see here when they had this rate cut, we bottomed out later. I, I looked at this one, and this was the biggest peak of inflation. I'll go to that chart here in a second. But what's interesting to me is how they cut rates right before inflation peaked there. And in a way, to me, that makes sense. Like, wouldn't you cut rates as close to the market bottom as you could to then stimulate the economy? But, you know, I know it, it's... It, it, it must be very hard to be in the Fed's shoes, you know, love them or hate them. I think they have an impossible task of managing all the overspending that our Congress does. And so, you know, they're just doing the best they can. It, and I'm sure covering up a lot of bigger issues. If we go to inflation and take this off log, if we go to inflation, I'll show you those three peaks I was talking about. And what I did on these peaks, those were the white lines on the S&P chart. And again, this is when inflation spiked all the way up here, you know, 14, 15%. A lot of people are wondering if we're in this kind of an area right here where inflation wants to go higher. And so that's why the Fed's not going to cut for a while or so they say. And if you take a look, I mean, this has been one of the highest inflation peaks in in quite some time you know really since these two back here in the 70s and 80s here that's all the way to the 40s so you know right now taking a look at it it's between the 100 and the 200 month moving average and you, you can see you know we even have i have my buy sell signal indicator on there and we're chopping between the 100 and the 200 so you know one way to look at it at least what crossed my mind is well, doesn't this look like accumulation? Uh, so, you know, maybe they're going to keep rates higher for longer 
and should inflation, even with high rates, start to get the four or around 4%, don't be surprised if they raise rates again. So just something to keep an eye out for. We haven't taken a look at unemployment in a while, but something you will notice is that it is trending up. Usually the spikes while we're in the recession, but the fact it's trending up is obviously not a great thing. Just a quick look at Bitcoin. And of course I do crypto videos. Our most recent signals, we had a weekly sell signal here we're on the 10 moving average. I've been wondering if we'll get down to the 20 here, somewhere around 55,000. If I go to the one year, you see Bitcoin got awfully close to this 100 moving average. This wick matched all the way up with back here, and I was wondering if we were gonna match that wick sometime soon. So it's possible we have a bottom here, and maybe crypto, you know, it's got a little accumulation. It had its regular sell-off, and crypto usually has these 20 percent off so maybe that's it and since the bottom we've had a number of those 20 percent sell-offs you know one right here you know it's always about 20 to 22 two three trust me these are all around 20 percent four and then here a fifth one so this would be right in line with these other sell-offs should it get bigger um, then, yeah, again, I'd be watching for maybe somewhere 51,000 to, to 55,000. You know, we got this uh, 100 moving average, and that's going to be pretty strong. If it gets under that 100 day, then watch out. So let's get into Mag7 stocks because NVIDIA, my God, if you look at the right here, you see this big fat 10. NVIDIA fell 10%, and if we just zoom way in, I mean, look at this chart. That's crazy. Just dying the whole day on Friday. And as you zoom out, you can see, well, you know, it had signs that this thing was getting ready to, to roll over on the shorter time frames, especially right here. And this big fib that I drew, just like I was showing you in the S&P 500, when you draw a fib from the height of the low, you can see here NVIDIA hit this 3618 and 967. And it has gone down ever since. Now, the 20 moving average in the 2618 is their support. So it's really important to see what NVIDIA does around the 730 level. And as you guys can see, should NVIDIA break above that 970 mark, this would be the next mark to watch for, the 4236 at 1114. I know a lot of people are talking about the 1,000 mark, but that would be an area to watch for. It does have a weekly sell signal and as far as the daily it's coming down to the hundred moving average so it, as well as that fib here so again you know watch this whole area around 730 now would I be buying Nvidia here me personally I would not even though it is coming down to some good moving averages and the reason is I mean just take a look at the last year Nvidia was as low as 270 and, and now it's you know, three times as much. So, you know, I like to buy stocks that I like and use when they're closer to yearly lows rather than closer to yearly highs. And again, this thing has just shot up so big. Who knows how low it could go should we get a big market correction style event. Microsoft, here, this one, it's on the 100 day. I've been waiting for it to hit this 434 mark. It's gone down to the 100 day um, and again microsoft probably the best strongest stock in the world well, i mean it is the biggest it finally got under three trillion dollars so that hasn't happened in a little bit we'll see if this 100 day moving average can hold going over to the weekly which i like to uh, base my buys and profit taking off a bit more you can see you can see we have a sell signal now Sell signals aren't everything, you know, they can get scooped up real quick. But that 20, uh, it, if we do indeed break through it, you know, that, that 50 is going to be a strong uh, area of support or will need to be a strong area of support uh, without this guy, you know, coming down quite a bit further. So, you know, Microsoft showing some cracks. We'll, we'll see if this one comes down a bit hard like NVIDIA did to Apple. You know, one thing I do like about Apple is that 
on the weekly, you can see here it's at this 618 Feb as well as the 100 week moving average. And going back in time, you know, mapping this out, how, how often Apple is at or below the 100 week to 200 week. And this is, you know, the second top stock in the world at 2.5 trillion. It, it's not often. So, you know, this may be a good time to dollar cost average in. Again, it could go lower. That's totally possible. You know, here you can see this fib right there is around uh, 162. That could be an area to target. Or, you know, if you go to the weekly, yeah, the 200s all the way down there. But some of these fib levels, 162, 153, the 200s at 147. So I would not blame anyone for dollar cost averaging in between the levels we're at now and down there. Again, who knows how long it'll be until you see profits from your Apple investment. And an important thing to know, especially with market cap, with this being a $2.5 trillion market cap, if you were to put $1,000 into Apple right now, you would expect this to be worth $5 trillion in order for your 1000 to be 2000 Now, again, we have inflation issues and wages will eventually have to catch up to meet those inflation issues. So, you know, money, it just keeps growing in an organic way because of that. But that is something to watch for. I know five trillion seems crazy, but after wages catch up and we get in a in a bull run style economy again, um, I would not be surprised to see that happen. So I, I remember when it was crazy for stocks to be worth a trillion, you know, and now it's like, oh, you know, whatever. So just something to keep perspective on. Amazon, you see here right after making that new all time high and it's ever so little here on the weekly. We're showing some red. Google did this before, too. So if Amazon comes down, watch for this level at around 165. We have the 20 moving average and that fib there. If we go over to the daily, you can see it's resting right on that 50 day. So and we have some structure here. So maybe there will be some area for a bounce. Now, one thing I like to do as far as long term investing, I already told you I don't like buying stocks that I really love. And I do love Amazon when they're near a yearly high. Um, but at the very least, I look for any buy sell signal indicator um, to be on the weekly or monthly to show a buy just to confirm because yes you might buy this red um but you could be catching it and telling yourself hey, it's a good deal but you could be catching a falling knife and it might continue to go lower so you can look for confirmation um now i'll be honest myself as things go deeper especially on the weekly time frame um if it's stock i really love and it's deeper than the hundred week moving average it, I might not care as much if it's just looking red and doesn't have as much, much structure. I might be looking to dollar cost average in anyways, um, just in case, you know, there's something crazy that happens like a V bottom reversal, something like that. Google, you can see this one's still looking pretty strong. So Google, you have to go to the daily to see that recently had a sell signal going off. And right here, it's at the 20 day moving average. Obviously, we have those prior all-time highs, you know, all the way back. We've cracked above it twice. Here is where I'm wondering, you know, if Amazon's going to do something like this, go down to its 200-day and then bounce. So Google, we'll see what happens there moving forward. Meta, Meta also to its 50-day moving average. And the next FIB line that, let's go over to the weekly to see it better. The next FIB line up should things get bullish again sometime soon. The 1618 is at 567. So that would be an area I would expect to see some resistance um, and then eventually Meta get through there. No, it seems crazy, but again, you, you saw in the Nvidia charts that, you know, these FIB lines, they do get honored. And after that, 863 for Meta. Can you imagine? Seems crazy. Let's go over to Tesla and then we'll work our way into some of the earnings reports. Tesla, this thing's not looking good. <laughs> so this one's just going deeper. You see, we have this fib line right here 
at around 141. Something to know when drawing fibs. When you draw a fib from the prior high to low, if you're looking at prices between, not prices the target above, you want to make sure your fib is on the log scale. Click that settings button, fibs based on the log scale. Of course, you want to hit that L over here for a log as well. So we have the 236 at 141. And you can see the weekly, man, it, it's underneath the weekly. Going over to the monthly, what do we got? Tesla hitting the 100-month moving average. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, and you can see because how much newer of a stock it is, you know, it came out here at around June of 2010. That That's why the monthly's just appearing. If it were to get lower, you know, you might have to add on an indicator for like the 200 just to force it to appear um if it even could i'm not sure it it might be too new to really calculate that out but its market cap is at 470 billion i've often questioned how highly valued tesla is um nothing against elon musk or tesla people i know uh love the vehicles who own them they they do but when you think of other car companies that are established like Ford and GM, they have twice the revenue and their stocks have a market cap around 10 times less. Sometimes recently, you know, at the all time high, 20 times less. I just have a hard time wrapping my brain around that. And especially when Elon, I want you guys to go do this. Uh, take a look at when Elon was on Twitter asking graciously asking his followers if he should be selling any stock so he could pay taxes you know the, the nice man he is and he literally sold at the top <laughs> you know so um again i'm not saying elon's a bad guy but you know sometimes his shills are, they're just a bit too much for me you know the guy can do no wrong in their eyes and the guy literally like how could you not know elon's a smart guy he knows that the, the stock was way overvalued and he's been interviewed, you know, saying as much before that sometimes he doesn't like when he, these Tesla pumps happen because, you know, when stocks are overvalued, they can get pummeled quite a bit. So, you know, Elon, take a look at when he tweeted about selling stocks and you'll see it was right there around that uh, November of 2021 time. So anyways, let's get into earnings reports and all right here we go so we'll run through these pretty quick schw chuck schwab all right how is chuck schwab doing so what i'm gonna do here is just go to the weekly set this and i'll draw a fib from the from the high to the low so you guys can see how i do this do it yourself on your trading view, I, I want this to be a channel where we can help each other. And, you know, by the way, if there's anything you have to share, any insider info, you know, on a stock, crypto, mining stock, whatever, please type it below. If you think I'm being too bearish in my opinion on a stock and you have some data to say, hey, this this uh, Bitcoin miner is good because reasons X, Y, and Z, please do that it, we are on this channel i want people to be open to information and so that we can check our bias and make sure that we're trying to keep ourselves in check you know we're all human sometimes i mean he, heck just listen to me talk about tesla you know like i know i have a bias against tesla again it's it's nothing personal against elon or their cars it's just the charts as far as how overvalued i think it is but sometimes we have to check our biases so we don't miss opportunities anyways taking a look at chuck schwab you can see here we're at the 618 right at around 72 and that things are bullish it's above the weekly moving averages and a weekly buy signal is hitting some resistance at that 618 and right now looking good so chuck schwab overall looking like a strong stock would i be buying it now no um but you know as things get lower you know, again, you can look for price structure and turnarounds. Let's go to the next one, Goldman Sachs, GS. And by the way, if there's any stocks you want me to chart in my next stock video, just comment below. I'd be happy to do that. Um, Goldman Sachs. All right. So here on the weekly, man, look at that brutal sell-off. Now this one, 
you can see this is one of those stocks that ran up pretty hard with all the COVID stimulus money. Came down to the 200 week and now is above those moving averages. So does have a weekly buy signal. New, I don't know if we really need a fib on this. We can already tell the price would be at around the 786 or a little bit above it. Let's just confirm here. Yeah, so there's the 786 right up here. You can always tell when it's within like, I don't know, to me, what looks like 10%, 20% uh, of the all-time high. So, yeah, right there, it's got a weekly buy signal. So maybe this one will go up further and break into all-time highs. And should it, you know, one of the things we do is we make sure that our FIB is off log scale. Put it on when you're looking between an off log scale, 517.6 would be a very bullish, very, very bullish outlook. Next, let's take a look at, I wanna go through these quick. Any of you guys who follow my channel know how I can uh, talk way too long. United Health, let's look at that quick, and J&J. &J. UNH and J&J, UNH. All right, United Health. Okay, what do we have here? That's pretty good bull run all the way from the COVID lows. And then here we've had some accumulation. If we zoom in, yeah, it's had accumulation for the last year. Now you can see, man, we just recently had earnings and this was earlier this week, this thing just shot up and now it's battling that 200 day moving average as resistance. So if any of you caught the 200 week bounce, look at that, that was a good time to catch some United Health. Um, now, for me personally, one of my rules of stocks is I don't buy stocks just because, you know, they have juicy prices because, you know, if it's not a product I like and use, I have no in insider information on it. And you also want to do your research. So make sure it's a product you like and a product you use, because if it is a product you use and you don't like it, then why would you want to buy it? So, you know, I don't know if any of you have United Health, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Um, but that could be some insider info on whether or not you feel it's a company worth investing into. So, you know, we've been going down. Maybe this will be an area to get support, to get a bounce. I'm going over to the monthly. You can see this monthly sell signals playing out to the 50-month the moving average and really rarely gets underneath the 50. You can see here, great financial crisis, of course, the only time that happened. Um and then the kind of around the dot-com bubble leaning up into it. Big time of accumulation. So, you know, who knows? Um, here we may be getting a pretty big bounce, but maybe you want to look for confirmation. We do have this weekly. Look at that long-legged doji. These things can violently uh, explode in price action either way. So just something to look out for. J and J, Johnson and Johnson. All right, I thought I've taken a look at this one before. Let's delete that fib, let's, okay. So right now you can see we are, we are going down, man. Johnson and Johnson is on the 100 month moving average. <coughs> Excuse me, it wicked down to it. Right now the price is a little high, higher than that, you know, where we have some former structure but you can see the 100 month and it's not an area we tag too much you can see great financial crisis it got underneath that so you know maybe you're thinking about dollar cost averaging into johnson and johnson now it does have a monthly sell signal right now so if it gets below the 100 month you know this area around 120 would be the next area to target going over to the weekly see here we have the high and well, there's a low right there. So, <laughs> you know, again, not saying this can't go lower, um, especially to that 200 week. But, you know, if we do get a turnaround, obviously we have a lot of resistance in these moving averages around the 382 at 158. And you'd want it to get above that to then show, you know, a strong sign of reversal to the upside. But for now, we're just creating lower highs and lower lows. So, you know, Johnson & Johnson, uh, not looking so great. Um, but again, I would wait for confirmation. 
on a, especially because we have a strong macro monthly sell signal right now. If it gets under this 100 week, you know, again, a way to look at it all the way since the great financial crisis is, hey, the 200 week tends to be a good time to buy. So if you do like Johnson & Johnson, use their product, you feel very strong. This 143 to 118 area doesn't look like a bad time to buy or dollar cost average in as scary as it looks. Bank of America, we can just take a quick look. We don't have to do too much charting with it. I want to want to keep this moving here. Okay, monthly buy signal playing out. Let's go to the weekly. Weekly, we have a sell signal and it got down to the 20 moving average. We have all these moving averages converged right here. The 50, 100, 200, right at around 33. So if Bank of America gets below 33, look out below. Then you're going to have to start looking sideways for some structure. Or, you know, like I showed you before, look at the monthlies and see, you know, if it's going down to the 50, 100, 200. Any others? Let's, let's move on. Wednesday, nothing I really want to take a look at there. Taiwan, Semiconductor, and Netflix. I think we'll close with those. Yeah, let's just do that. TSM and Netflix. And then we'll end there. I promise. All right, Taiwan Semiconductor. Monthly, you can see we last had a monthly buy signal around November. I mean, hell, what hasn't been going up since November? Really, it's just been recently that things are going down. But on the weekly, you can see, man, this weekly sell signal came in. Almost got down to the 20 but after seeing NVIDIA go down 10%, you know, if that were to happen, if TSM had a 10% sell-off, where would it put us right at around where this 20 moving average is? Um, is it going to happen? Who knows? But do be on the lookout, especially when the largest semiconductor stock in the world has a 10% drop. You know, semis as a whole, they might start getting hit one by one. And as you can see, you know, late... 22 was the time to buy a lot of stocks, you know, whether semis, meta, Amazon, whatever. Um, but should things start to turn around, get underneath the 50s and the hundreds, and then look out below. Let's draw a fib here. Well, we just made a recent high. Um, you know, I'm going to go from this prior high to the low. Let's do that. Prior high to the low and make sure that this fib it looks like it's on log scale but i just want to make sure um we also have that fib at around 120 so that could be another area to watch for um and then the 50 at around 111. let's close out with netflix and um yeah again feel free to comment any stocks you want me to take a look at i also look at cryptos all coins available on Coinbase and Robinhood, take a look at Bitcoin mining stocks, the rainbow chart, Bitcoin, crypto in general. Um, a lot of people like those videos, but I do think it's important to look at stocks as well because, you know, for these stocks that go up an average of 20 to 50 percent a year, it, with crypto being so volatile, I don't mind putting my money in a safer spot where it can grow and work for me. Um, but yeah, anyways, Netflix. See here from July of 22, man, look at this move. 280%. Reminds you of some of the other ones like uh, Amazon, Facebook. Well, NVIDIA has been one of the best. Uh, but if we take a FIB and we draw from this prior high to the low, okay, and what do we got here? So we have this weekly sell signal. I hit that 20 moving average. We have the next FIB down here at around 510, 511. The 50 week moving average, 487. Let's go over to the daily. The daily Netflix got down. Look at that sell off, man. How big of a sell off was that? It was like another 10 percenter. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so just like Netflix, you know, 10 percent. My God. Uh, all the way to the 100 day moving average. The 200 day moving average is creeping up to that 786 fib. Again, at around 511. So might be a nice area for some support or a bounce on the monthly it's probably just going to show green yep uh, but you see here the monthly 50 moving average um man well i hold that thought i was going to say because i've seen this in a lot of other stocks now look at this 
you know, the, the bull market support band, which is an indicator you can use, it, it's showing the 20 moving average or the 10 or the 20, one, one or the other or both, I forget. Uh, I haven't used it in a hot minute. But a lot of times I will see strong support on the 50. Now you can see the last two times we just blasted through. Now when it had a little correction, kind of came down to that 50, wicked underneath a little bit, wicked right to it that time, and then went up. Uh, but the last two times, you know, COVID and great financial crisis, it, it got to the 100, got to underneath the 100. 200 wasn't alive back then, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it would have been close. And so anytime this thing's under the 100, between the 100 and 200, Netflix tends to be a good value time to buy. So just something to watch for, you know, as, as you can see this one, when it's hitting that 20 moving average, tends to have some pretty good bounces. Um, but the last two times it's gotten under the 50, uh, look out below. It's only bounced off it once since the great financial crisis. That's kind of funny just looking at it and then here all the way. Man, Netflix, did you guys know this thing was around all the way back in early 2000s? Yeah, I think um, that was back when... Remember, you could rent DVDs from Netflix. Man, I'm having some blockbuster flashbacks. So Netflix, been around for a while. And then, oh, yeah, Netflix, they were going to do that split where they had the other company called, like, uh, um, not OnStar. Uh, but they did, tried doing a split-off thing where one company would handle the DVD sales and he had just worked through them. And Netflix would only be the online service. Do you guys remember this? Everyone hated it and they backtracked, like, a week or two later it was hilarious um but yeah gosh I, I am remembering the netflix stock being around since back then i should have bought some god damn it i could add netflix you know <laughs> for at, at around three bucks and um yeah made a hundred a you know almost a 200 x profit if I would have invested in Netflix stock back there. God damn it. All right. <laughs> so, so anyways, Netflix overall looking bullish. Um, but watch out for that 50-month moving average like I showed you. And uh, should it get under the 20-week, you know, it, hopefully it catches some support out up here. Otherwise, look out below. You know, when it's getting down these FIB levels, you know, that's, again, when I move up in um in as far as time frame, you know, and as you guys can see, we either blast through it or we get some good support. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you are all having a wonderful weekend. Take care.